Hollywood has always been a land of dreams and second chances where stars are born and legends are made. But behind the glitz and glamour lies a darker side, a world where careers can be destroyed in an instant, and even the biggest names can find themselves blacklisted and banned. From controversial opinions to behind-the-scenes drama, these are the actors who Hollywood will never welcome back. You might be surprised to see who made the list. Kirk Cameron Being one of Hollywood's most well-known child stars in the 1980s, Kirk Cameron's path into the entertainment business started very young. With his charisma and comic timing, his most famous performance came on the classic sitcom Growing Pains, where he delighted viewers for seven seasons. Mike Seaver Beyond TV Cameron had movie appearances in films including Like Father Like Son and Listen to Me. These roles confirmed his position as a cherished member of the entertainment scene in youth. But Cameron has turned away from being mostly known as an actor as the years have gone by. Today, his name is more intimately connected with his open Christian views, which have attracted much attention and debate. Often talking about his religious beliefs on several platforms, Cameron has grown to be a well-known person in evangelical circles. His opinions on religion, especially his positions on homosexuality, and other social concerns have generated a lot of discussion and resulted in Hollywood's marginalization of him. Once a revered actor, Cameron is today sometimes viewed as a divisive person mostly because of his constant advocacy for his religious convictions. His public image now reflects more of a Christian activist than of the performer he previously was. For Cameron's career, this change in public image has had clear effects. His candor has resulted in what many believe to be a kind of blacklisting from mainstream Hollywood. Cameron is still undeterred, though, and he keeps pushing his ideas using public speaking events, social media, and interviews. Particularly in a sector as powerful as Hollywood, his narrative reflects the complexity that results from personal convictions interacting with public life. Brendan Fraser Rising to popularity in the late 1990s and early 2000s, Brendan Fraser became among the most identifiable faces in Hollywood. Having produced a run of hit movies including Bedazzled and The Mummy, Fraser became well known for his adaptability and cinematic charm. But as the years passed, his prominence in Hollywood started to fade as fewer parts came available. Fraser credits a very disturbing event he thinks had a major influence on his career for some of the drop. Fraser claims in 2003 that during an event at the Beverly Hills Hotel, Philip Burke, the former president of the Hollywood Foreign Press Association, HFPA, sexually harassed him. Fraser claims that this encounter, which he describes as including Burke inappropriately groping him, had long-term effects on his career. Fraser objected to the advance, and he thinks this resulted in his later estrangement from Hollywood circles, especially from the HFPA. Since the incident, Fraser has hardly been asked back to events by the company, which is important for the Golden Globe Awards. Conversely, Burke has refuted Fraser's narrative, asserting in his 2014 biography that the exchange was intended as a jest. Fraser is sure that the episode with Burke had a major influence, even if he admits that there could be several causes for the drop in his productivity. Fraser has candidly discussed the psychological and emotional toll such an event took on him both personally and professionally. It is impossible to overestimate. He muses over the unexpected decline in prospects and notes how the phone stopped ringing and projects grew rare. Fraser's story clarifies the darker side of Hollywood, where personal tragedy and power relations may mix to have terrible consequences on one's career and well-being. Roseanne Barr Roseanne Barr's career has been a roller coaster of highs and lows with success mixed with controversy. Rising to popularity as a stand-up comic, Barr developed her routine in her personal life, frequently finding comedy in her relationships and encounters with violent partners. Although her early work was popular and connected with viewers, over time the repetitious quality of her work started to wear thin. Her once fresh and edgy comic approach began to feel antiquated and disconnected from modern viewers as the years passed. But Barr's fortunes altered when she moved from stand-up to television, producing the venerable sitcom Roseanne. Running effectively for several years, the show established her position in the annals of American television by presenting her special mix of humor and social commentary. Barr's career suffered despite her popularity with Roseanne because of her progressively contentious public image. She has lately gained more notoriety for her controversial comments than for her comic ability. Often defending her right to free expression, Barr has used this argument to defend her provocative remarks. Still, the world of 2018 was not as forgiving as it may have been in years past. 
The emergence of social media has made public personalities more likely to answer for their words and deeds. Barr discovered she was the target of a social media firestorm after a particularly nasty tweet. Barr said in the tweet that Valerie Jarrett, a former Obama advisor, resembled a creature from Planet of the Apes, a comment generally denounced as racist. The criticism came quickly and forcefully. Having lately resurrected Roseanne under the new title, The Connors, the American Broadcasting Company, ABC, was under great pressure to separate itself from Barr. Eventually, the network decided to call off the show, therefore terminating Barr's TV career. Barr has nevertheless been expressing her divisive views on several venues, alleging that her opponents are too sensitive and that she was unfairly handled. She has shown annoyance at not being allowed the opportunity to completely explain herself or offer apologies. But in the fast-paced, highly linked world of today, public opinion often renders decisions swiftly and mercilessly. Barr's actions have had severe repercussions. Hence, it is doubtful that she will ever come back under major public attention. Shia LaBeouf The path Shia LaBeouf has taken from child star to problematic actor has been as dramatic as any of the movies he has featured in. LaBeouf originally became well-known as a young actor on Disney Channel's Even Stevens, where his charm and comic timing won him popularity among fans. His move to Hollywood blockbusters, especially with the Transformers series, looked to solidify his reputation as a rising star in the business. LaBeouf's career has been beset, nevertheless, by a string of personal and professional disappointments that have eclipsed his early achievements. His increasingly erratic behavior on an offset has earned him a reputation as a challenging and unstable Hollywood character. Among the most noteworthy events in LaBeouf's turbulent career took place on the Fury film set. LaBeouf allegedly got into a physical fight with his co-star Scott Eastwood during production. Brad Pitt had to break things up. LaBeouf has been involved in many disputes over the years, on set as well as in his personal life. So this was not a singular occurrence. Among his legal issues have been public intoxication, disruptive behavior, and even assault. These events have shown an actor trying to keep his life and profession on track. LaBeouf's career suffered the most, though, in 2020 when musician FKA Twigs, his former girlfriend, accused him of severe physical and emotional abuse. Alleged to be abusive throughout their relationship, she claimed to have experienced events whereby LaBeouf threatened her life and caused severe psychological anguish. Though the matter did not proceed to trial, the charges brought to light the darker sides of LaBeouf's actions, which resulted in general censure. LaBeouf answered by refuting the accusations, then eventually apologized via the New York Times, a gesture many considered as insufficient, too late. Since these disclosures, LaBeouf's career has been in freefall. Many in the business have distanced from him. His erratic behavior and the major accusations against him have made him a pariah in Hollywood. His once promising career now seems to be completely destroyed. Though efforts at atonement are commendable, it is uncertain whether LaBeouf will ever be able to completely rebuild his reputation or whether he will remain on the margins of the business that once loved him. James Franco Once regarded as one of Hollywood's most gifted actors, James Franco was sometimes compared to James Dean for his brooding intensity and range. With his depiction of Dean in the 2001 biopic, which won critical praise and laid the stage for a run of well-publicized performances, Franco's career got off steam. He kept developing his name by starring in movies like 127 Hours, which got him an Academy Award nomination for Best Actor. One of the most sought-after performers of his generation, Franco could play a broad spectrum of characters from comedy to drama. But his explosive ascent came to a sudden stop when a string of troubling accusations clouded his career. Following the Hash Me Too movement, when many in Hollywood were being held responsible for prior transgressions, the claims against Franco started to surface. Many of the women who came forward with claims of sexual misbehavior have ties to Franco's founding acting school, Studio 4. The ladies said that Franco had taken use of his position of authority to harass young actresses into awkward positions and, in some cases, try to destroy their careers should they refuse his demands. Considering Franco's professed support of the Hash Me Too movement, a posture many perceived as disingenuous considering the allegations against him, these disclosures were especially startling. One of the first and most well-publicized events included a 17-year-old girl Franco met looking for a selfie with him. Later, Franco followed her on social media, trying to set up a hotel encounter, which, given her age, caused major questions. 
Franco's reputation as a Hollywood golden boy was destroyed when more women came forward, which resulted in his virtual exile from the business. Seth Rogen, a longtime friend and partner, too openly turned away from Franco, a sign of just how profoundly the actor's decline from favor had affected his contacts in the business. Franco has tried to personally respond to the accusations, but his career has suffered greatly. Hollywood, where popular opinion is sometimes more valued than ability, has mostly turned away from him. The accusations have tarnished his once promising career. Even with his best attempts to go past the matter, it seems that Franco's days as a top man in Hollywood are behind us. His narrative reminds us sharply of how fast celebrity can fade when personal behavior comes to light, particularly at a time when public figures are under more and more demand for responsibility. Leah McKelly, once a brilliant figure in the entertainment business with major parts in Glee and Scream Queens, Leah McKelly had a bright career path, but her actions on set have seriously damaged her reputation. Therefore, casting doubt on her future in Hollywood, unquestionably talented, Michelle seemed to be unstoppable for a period. As the adage goes, what goes around comes around, and Michelle discovered she was dealing with the fallout from her actions. Many saw it as karma catching up with her. When former Glee co-stars started to voice her on-set behavior, Michelle's career suffered greatly. Many sources claim that Michelle was a self-obsessed and manic presence, which made life on set terrible for those close by. These rumors about a performer who was challenging to deal with and whose behavior was far from professional, despite her popularity and reputation as one of the major names on Glee, painted an image of when Glee co-star Naya Rivera released her memoir, in which she revealed Michelle's troubling behavior and made analogies between Michelle and her Glee character Rachel Berry, both of whom were known for their ruthlessness in chasing the spotlight, the situation grew more dire. The internet's response to Michelle's fall from grace, especially the popular Leah Michelle can't read meme, which poked fun at her unwillingness to improvise or stray from the script, was among the most destructive things about it. Though funny to some, this meme damaged Michelle's reputation and made her the target of much scorn. Furthermore, the sad death of her partner and fellow Glee star Corey Monteith from a drug overdose, sometimes absolves or dismisses Michelle's behavior. But during this time, the public and the business grew less forgiving of her past behavior. Notwithstanding all this, Michelle was able to land a main part in the Broadway Funny Girl production, a major accomplishment that astounded her detractors. This position highlighted that her chances are now mostly limited to Broadway, rather than the larger Hollywood scene, even though it implied that some in the business were ready to accept her apologies and grant her a second opportunity. Michelle's path is a sobering reminder of the need for professionalism and humility in a field where aptitude by itself cannot keep a career going. Hollywood seems not ready to greet Leah Michelle back with wide arms as things stand, leaving her to negotiate a future far more unclear than it ever was. Randy Quaid Once a bright performer with an Oscar nod under his belt, Randy Quaid has fallen one of the most dramatically in Hollywood history. Early in the 1970s, Quaid was at the height of his career, winning praise for his performance in The Last Detail, which brought Oscar, BAFTA, and Golden Globe nominations. Notwithstanding this early success, Quaid's professional and personal life spun out of control and resulted in a string of public controversies and legal problems that essentially ruined his Hollywood career. Early in the 2000s, Quaid started having problems when he was reported by the Internal Revenue Service IRS, for tax non-payment. This signaled the start of a protracted financial and legal odyssey that would afflict the actor for years. Quaid sought to sue Focus Features in 2004, alleging insufficient compensation for his little part in Brokeback Mountain. Although the lawsuit was dropped, it brought attention to Quaid's more desperate efforts at income generation and restoration of his Hollywood reputation. Quaid's career was in a severe downturn by 2008. Actors' Equity Association kicked him off the cast of a Seattle production for improper and violent behavior. His professional reputation suffered greatly with this exile. Hence, he had trouble finding employment in the field. Quaid's personal life was as disorganized. In 2009, he was arrested for failing to pay a $10,000 hotel bill, therefore cheating an innkeeper in Santa Barbara. This episode was only the start of a string of strange legal issues that would finally bring him down. One of the most notorious events in Quaid's turbulent life happened when he and his wife were accused of burglary for unlawfully inhabiting a guest house they had formerly owned. The authorities saw things differently while the Quaids asserted they were the legitimate owners of the property and that there had been a documentation issue. The Quaids left for Canada, 
where they requested refuge, claiming that Hollywood star whackers were persecuting them. As it became obvious they were in major legal hot ground, this ridiculous assertion did nothing to strengthen their case and just served to erode Randy Quaid's reputation. Randy Quaid's legal problems and strange behavior define him today more than his once promising acting career does. Given a long charge sheet covering tax evasion, fraud, and burglary, Quaid appears quite unlikely to ever make a triumphant return in Hollywood. Tippi Hedren Renowned director Alfred Hitchcock first noticed Tippi Hedren, a name connected with grace and fortitude, while she was a fashion model. Her major break came when Hitchcock found her and cast her in his classic suspense thriller The Birds, 1963, then the psychological drama Marnie, 1964. These parts helped Hedren become well-known and a top actress in Hollywood. Underneath the surface, though, her relationship with Hitchcock was anything from glitzy. Renowned for his exacting and sometimes dictatorial style, Hitchcock apparently became fixated on Hedren as he made repeated uninvited sexual approaches toward her. His infatuation rapidly became poisonous. Emphasizing her dignity and self-respect, Hedren turned down Hitchcock's approaches and made it plain that their working on Marnie would be their last. Hitchcock, who threatened to ruin her career in a flash of spiteful wrath, found great discomfort in her refusal. Using his clout and influence in the business, he kept Hedren under contract, so blacklisted her from working two years elsewhere. Though Hedren's career might have been cut short during this moment of professional uncertainty, she stayed firm. When Hitchcock at last sold her contract in 1966, Hedren could resume her career. She kept working in film and television, demonstrating that she was more than simply a muse for a demanding filmmaker, even though she never attained the same level of popularity as she achieved during her time with Hitchcock. Apart from her acting profession, Hedren discovered a fresh enthusiasm in the animal rights movement, especially in support of big cat preservation. She started the Shambhala Preserve, an exotic animal refuge, and started to strongly object to the way the entertainment business used animals. Hedren's narrative is one of tenacity and bravery since she not only survived the negative side of Hollywood, but also directed her experiences into a lifetime dedication to a cause she fervuously believed in. Hedren's legacy is evidence of her will to keep on her terms and her bravery in confronting one of Hollywood's most influential people. She is recognized today not only for her parts in Hitchcock's films, but also for her relentless advocacy of animal rights, therefore pioneering both the entertainment sector and activism. CeeLo Green Born Thomas DeCarlo Calloway, CeeLo Green gained popularity in the middle of the 1990s while a member of the hip-hop group Goody Mob. He did not, however, become well-known until his solo career got off steam in the 2010s. With his catchy and irreverent song, F Asterisk Asterisk KU, which shot him to fresh heights of prominence and peaked at number two on the Billboard charts, 2010 smash single. The popularity of the song created many opportunities for Green, which resulted in his appointment as a judge on the well-known singing competition program The Voice, and even his own television series. With his eccentric demeanor and musical ability, Green became a popular person in mainstream culture and seemed to be able to do no wrong for a period. But after a string of divisive tweets that startled and alienated his fan base, Green's career sank sharply in 2014. The tweets, which featured homophobic and aura asterisk E insensitive remarks, infuriated people and resulted in a notable reaction. In one tweet, Green said, widely denounced as not only naive, but also rather damaging, that it isn't ra asterisk E if the victim is unconscious. The reaction was quick and strong. Many accused Green of trivializing survivor trauma and supporting ra asterisk E culture. For Green's career, the result of these tweets was disastrous. On The Voice, he lost his place. The network distances itself from him in response to the scandal. His television show was also canceled, and several of his booked musical engagements were either canceled or witnessed notable declines in attendance, as both venues and fans tried to distance themselves from the disgraced artist. Green tried to apologize and explain his remarks, but the harm was done. His once promising career was essentially wrecked, and he discovered he was blacklisted from many of the prospects that had once been easily accessible to him. The narrative of CeeLo Green offers a warning about the influence of words and the need for responsibility in the era of social media. His fall from grace emphasizes how rapidly public opinion can change, especially in cases when someone's behavior is seen as rude or damaging. Green's still making music and touring, but the controversy has permanently changed his career and reminds us of how quickly success can vanish when one ignores the effect of their words. Jim Carrey 
Once among Hollywood's most bankable stars, Jim Carrey is well known for his over-the-top comic approach and unforgettable performances in movies such as Dumb and Dumber, Liar Liar, and The Truman Show. His contagious enthusiasm and distinctive brand of humor made him a beloved personality in the entertainment business for years. Behind the scenes, though, Carrey's actions on set and his divisive public image have created a more mixed picture of the actor. Carrey is sometimes portrayed in intimate circles in Hollywood as erratic, someone who may be the most helpful mentor one minute and absolutely hostile the next. For movie filmmakers who are more afraid to put Carrey in big roles, this unstable conduct has made them gamble. His once strong relationship with viewers has also faded as his antics on and off screen started to eclipse his talent, therefore diminishing his fan base. Carrie's reputation for being challenging to deal with has only made things worse. The alchemy that once made him a significant draw in theaters seems to have disappeared. Carrie's frank political and social opinions have added to his problems by driving him even farther from the mainstream. On social media, he has been especially active, expressing his divisive views on Twitter among other sites. Among his most attacked positions is his candid resistance to vaccinations. Carrie has gone so far as to label vaccinations as poison and openly criticize California Governor Jerry Brown as a fascist for requiring them throughout the state. Apart from public reaction, these points of view have also helped him to lose appeal. His anti-vaccine rhetoric became especially controversial during the COVID-19 epidemic since it connected with a deadly surge of false information already generating damage. A self-imposed break results from Carrie's unwillingness to compromise his beliefs and his choice to avoid assuming new responsibilities unless they choose him. This posture has further isolated him from Hollywood, where the business has moved on mostly without him. Carrie's resistance to apologies or change of opinion points to his satisfaction with his present road, even if it means he won't be earning Hollywood checks anytime soon. Jim Carrey appears to be in a time of professional ambiguity right now, when his career is more shaped by what he won't do than by what he will. His narrative serves as a warning about how public image and personal values could affect an actor's career, occasionally, irreversibly. Mira Sorvino Once poised for long-term popularity, actress Mira Sorvino became one of Hollywood's most well-known victims in the Harvey Weinstein affair. For Woody Allen's Mighty Aphrodite, 1995, Sorvino's breakout performance won her both an Oscar and a Golden Globe. Her performance was much praised, and she appeared headed for a brilliant career. She was blacklisted from numerous Hollywood jobs, though, since she refused to yield to Weinstein's advances. Powerful and vengeful, Weinstein made sure Sorvino was marginalized, therefore virtually stopping her career for almost two decades. Although Weinstein's acts clearly had a big influence on her career's derailment, several insiders in the business contend that Sorvino's relationship with Woody Allen also helped her to lose direction. Many actors turned away from Allen during the period when claims about his mistreatment of his adopted daughter Dylan Farrow surfaced. Still, Sorvino stayed close to Allen since he owed much of her early success. Many in Hollywood disagreed with this choice, since they considered it as a tacit support of Allen's behavior. Sorvino so discovered she was even more excluded in the sector. The fact that Sorvino was one of the few actresses still working with Allen during a time when his reputation was under more and more criticism added to her career challenges. Her choice to be by his side, together with Weinstein's grudge, produced a perfect storm that virtually brought an end to her career in popular Hollywood. Sorvino openly apologized to the Farrow family for her past support of Allen only in 2018, in line with the Hash Me Too movement and following Weinstein's downfall. By then, though, the damage had been done and her once promising career had been cast in shadow. Despite all the difficulties she has encountered, Sorvino has kept working, albeit in less public roles. Using her stature to speak out against the systematic abuse of power in Hollywood, she has also been vocal in advocating for survivors of sexual assault. Sorvino's resilience and desire to fight for what she believes in have gained her a different type of respect even if her career may never completely rebound to the heights it once promised. Her narrative serves as a frightening reminder of the complexity of negotiating the ethical minefield of Hollywood, as well as the long-lasting effects that influential people like Weinstein can have on the lives and professions of those who oppose them. Cameron Diaz Once among the most sought-after actresses in Hollywood, Cameron Diaz had an outstanding career in the late 1990s and early 2000s. Diaz rose to household fame with films like The Mask, My Best Friend's Wedding, and There's Something About Mary, noted for her charm, 
comedic timing, and ability to carry both romantic comedies and somber roles. Both viewers and critics praised her. Her performance as Fiona in the Shrek series solidified her Hollywood A-lister reputation. Though initially successful, Diaz's career turned sharply negative when she started to make a string of bad movie decisions. After the holiday's 2006 critical and financial collapse, Diaz's career seemed to be headed down. She starred in a run of badly regarded movies, and her performances drew more and more criticism. Her prospects faded along with her box office attraction. Early in the 2010s, Diaz discovered she was having trouble landing the kind of parts that had earlier come so readily. Suddenly sidelined, the actress who had been at the peak of her game had a fewer and fewer directors ready to gamble on her. Diaz decided to completely leave Hollywood in reaction to her deteriorating career. Her leaving was subdued, with minimal notice since she decided to concentrate on her personal life instead. In 2015, Diaz wed musician Benji Maddens. In 2019, the pair welcomed their daughter Radix. Although Diaz has said she withdrew from the limelight because she wanted to concentrate on her family, industry sources claim the lack of suitable parts available to her also had an impact on her decision. She had talent and experience, but the jobs that may have restarted her career simply lacked existence. After a 10-year break, Diaz is trying a comeback with a fresh Netflix movie, Back in Action. But since Diaz's peak, the business has evolved drastically. It's unclear whether she can replicate the enchantment that first made her a celebrity. Re-establishing herself in Hollywood will probably be a difficult journey, particularly in a field that sometimes gives fresh faces more importance than seasoned performers returning. Diaz's narrative reflects the sometimes merciless character of Hollywood, where even the most popular performers can find themselves out of favor, and where a comeback, however well-intentioned, is never assured. Whether due to their personal choices, public controversies, or industry politics, these stars have found themselves on the outside looking in. While some may never return to the big screen, their stories serve as a cautionary tale of how quickly fortunes can change in the fickle world of entertainment. Thanks for watching. And if you enjoyed this deep dive into Hollywood's dark side, make sure to like, subscribe, and hit the bell icon so you never miss an update.